Okay, everybody, I'm going to show you how I make a spout for a teapot. There are several ways. Some people choose to throw the spout off of a hump of clay. I'm going to show you just basically if you need one or two off in a way that I think is a little easier as you know, I try and teach beginners the easiest way to do things. So people ask me how much clay do you need for a spout? Really, it depends on the size of your teapot and the aesthetics of how big you want that spout to be. But you can start with a super large spout and cut it down, kind of like a handle. So I'm starting with maybe four to five ounces of clay here. I'm gonna start to center that clay. So the reason people throw off of the mounds or the hump is because it's much easier to center a larger piece of clay than a small one. People get very distracted when it comes to throwing a small piece of clay. It's really a lesson in patience. You just gotta tell the clay how wide it's gonna be and how high it's gonna be. Keep your hands wet, lock that elbow in, and really, it's a waiting game. Just as still as you can, and then sand through the hourglass, the clay will end up right where you want it. Super important, don't take your hands off fast. It'll throw it right off center. So this really is a very centering Zen moment for, for a person trying to center four ounces of clay. Alrighty there. Okay, so what's really important about some spouts or spouts that I prefer to make is that they have a well on the bottom of their, of the cylindrical part. What that well does, the water kind of hangs out there before it pours out of the teapot. It does usually prevent spillage, drippage, and sort of that gushing waterfall, sort of like the calm before the storm. So we're gonna create a shape that is round and then narrow. So the best part about this is that we're gonna open up our floor to have no floor. Again, fingers super, um, hands together. I'm gonna take my pointer finger and go straight down until I hit the bat. Now, I use my green bat so I can show you guys. I am right down on the bottom there. It's quite satisfying, actually. So now I'm gonna open up a cylinder. And in theory, I'm gonna open up a cylinder that is about two inches wide because that's where that well is gonna be. Wheel going fast, I'll use my finger. I don't want the out top to be wide because then I have to deal with collaring. So I'm gonna scoop. Drag my finger along the bottom and I scooped. So right down on the bottom there, we have a floor that is about an inch and a half wide of clear green bat. That's where the water is going to come through. So now I'm just going to pull a cylinder, but I'm going to aim for volcano again. Start down on the bottom. Remember, it's wider down on the bottom. And I'm going to put more pressure up at the top. So it's wider at the bottom or thinner at the bottom because we made it so wide. So we don't want to make it any thinner. So you can see I've got myself a little volcano. I do what I'm calling the micro pull. I'm really just gonna use my fingers. Remember, when we're using larger clay, you use a lot of fingers or a knuckle. Medium clay, I tend to use two fingers, that one backed up by the other. But when I'm doing detailed work or something tiny, I'll do the micro pull. Now, all of these expressions are not anything that I learned in college. I make them up as I go. I'm starting to go up, starting to go up until I get to the top. Now what's great about a spout is I don't really care what the top looks like, so I'm gonna end up cutting it off anyway. But as you can see, this is a mighty big spout. What I can do with this, if I wanted to, is cut it in half, maybe put it on the side of a cylinder and call it a watering can, or maybe you like that sort of wide mouth um, teapot where it's you know, just kind of gushing out. But what I wanna do now is collar. Now the biggest mistake people make when they're collaring is that they don't move fast enough or um, the, uh, wet enough. So remember, it takes less time to get around, let's say a table, than it does an entire city block. So therefore we have to get our hands to move fast. So again, I'm gonna collar with my six points, my two thumbs, my space between my two knuckles and my fingertips. I'm gonna start down on the bottom. Somewhere I have a, a sexy pot video and I kind of talk about the, the details of how to collar. Remember, we are aiming for 
um, our hands to be attached. We don't want to use all of our fingers because everything gives different information. You're going to be putting more pressure here than here and the clay gets confused. Super wet, fingers going up, not doing anything, not doing anything, not doing anything and aggressive. And again, when I collar and I compress the clay, it's going to get thicker. So I want to thin this out. Okay. And now changing the angle, hopefully you'll be able to see what I do up on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and get my fingers in here and I want to thin out where I compressed up on the top here. And remember your clay is going to shrink. So that's actually a pretty good spout. We don't want to make it any narrower, but this sort of looks like um, the Tin Man's hat, right? We want it to have a little bit more of a curve to it. So we need to collar from about halfway up. So I'm gonna start on the bottom again, super wet hands, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Super pressure, don't stress out about that wonkiness and slowly take your hands off. So you see how narrow that is, but you can also maybe be able to see how much thicker the clay got. So I'm gonna get in there with my finger, stretch it in, and I'm actually just gonna start to pull from the part that got thicker. Slowly do that. Now I want to clean up my side here a little bit. Maybe I want the weld to be a little shorter, so I'm going to start on the bottom. Speed up my wheel when I get to the top. The mistake people make is their wheel's going too slow, and then your fingers get stuck, and then it starts to get thin, and then we get a twist. So watch how fast my fingers go. All the way up to the top, because again, less time to get a full revolution than when your clay is wider. Compress that lip. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna call this a spout for my wood tool. I'm gonna clean this off just a little bit because I do want this to transition into the side of my teapot. Take that off. What I'm going to do is wire it off. So I don't need to take this off the bat yet, but if I wanted to, I can just with my full hand just sort of pull it to the side. So as you can see, this is a pretty big spout. And what we'll be able to do is decide where we want it on the teapot. We're not going to do it now. We're going to wait until this is soft leather hard. And in the end, what we'll end up doing is cutting it to the angle of the teapot. Right, so here is the side of my teapot. There's my spout, there's the well that the clay is going to float and sit into before it pours out. And you can leave your spout just like that if you want. Or you can then cut a little bit off of this. It's a little bit of a messy sketch I got for you here. Maybe a little bit more, make that go out a little bit. And then that would be your spout. So as you can see, it looked big and obnoxious in the beginning, but you can use as little or a lot of your spout. So that's sort of my messy sketch of how we would attach it, but you kind of get the idea. So we're just gonna call it a spout.